वेलकम गाइस और दिस इज अवर माइक्रोवेव लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द माइक्रोवेव एक्टिव डिवाइसेस फ्रॉम द लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट द क्लिस्ट्रॉन इन दैट क्लिस्ट्रॉन्स वी जनरली सी द क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ होल एंड स्लॉट मैग्नेट्रॉन एज वेल एज द मैग्नेट्रॉन्स फॉर्म देयर कैटेगरीज सच थ्री थ्री काइंड ऑफ द कैटेगरीज आर देयर फर्स्ट वन इज कॉल्ड एज द निगेटिव रेजिस्टेंस मैग्नेट्रॉन साइक्लोट्रॉन फ्रीक्वेंसी मैग्नेट्रॉन एंड द ट्रेवलिंग वेव मैग्नेट्रॉन्स वी are all discussing about these categories in details and today we are going to discuss about the twt that is called as the traveling wave tube this traveling wave tube it is nothing but the one kind of the amplifier which makes use of distributed interaction between the electrons and a traveling wave the point which is a uh, necessary to remind forever when we studied about the twt this is nothing but the one kind of the amplifier and this amplifier which makes the use of distributed interactions and this distributed interactions between the electron beam and a traveling wave so these interactions which is in between the electrons and traveling wave it be the prolong with the interactions between the electron beam and rf field because the this interaction is necessary to ensure that both the traveling in a same directions and the these two traveling are nearly having the same velocity that's why this interaction is necessary for the tw t so another one point related with that traveling wave tube in that these are differs from multi cavity crystals which is seen in the previous lecture why it is a uh, differ from a multi cavity crystal because in that the electron beam travel and the rf field remain stationary that's why it is a uh, differ from the traveling wave tube is a uh, differ from the multi cavity crystals once again i just repeat this sentence the multi cavity crystal is a uh, differ from these traveling wave tube because in that the rf field remain the stationary due to these electron beam travels now the electron beam travel with a velocity which is governed by the anode voltage and this is a typical value of anode voltage and the value is high nearly 0.1 vc and what is the vc vc is nothing but the velocity of light in a vacuum just repeat this sentence again the electron beam the electron beam travels with a velocity and this velocity which is governed by the anode voltage this velocity is governed by the 
anode voltage and the typical value of anode voltage it is nothing but the 0.1 vc and what is the vc we see it is nothing but the velocity of light in vacuum so in case the rf field which is propagate with equal velocity of a light that means the velocity of a light and rf field both the velocities are equal both the velocities are equal now we see here that is the interactions of that rf field now explain here the interaction between rf field and the moving electron will takes place only when the velocity of rf field retarded by some means that is interactions in between the rf field and the electrons these electrons is in a moving and this is takes place only when when the velocity of rf field is retarded so it is the reason behind the interaction between the rf field and moving electrons so another one point that is the slow wave structure the slow wave structure to retarded rf here we just see the rf field is retarded that's why we can write here that is the retarded rf field these retarded rf field either use of helix or a wave guide arrangement and here we are interested to see the helix wave helix type traveling wave tube this is a physical construction of a traveling wave tube and it is a helix type wave tube so it is a diagram which is related with the helix type traveling wave tube now in that the the electron gun is used in that diagram we can see easily the electron gun the electron gun is used in a klystron and here also this is used for produce a narrow electron beam and which is turn passed through the center of a long coaxial helix this is one kind of the electron gun it is similar like that which is used in the klystron and this is used to produce a narrow electron beam which in turn pass through the center of a long axial helix and the magnetic and the magnetic focusing field this magnetic focusing field provide to prevent the beam from spreading it is it is prevent the beam from spreading that means it is this magnetic focusing field is used for the for the beam are not spread the beam is not spread and the guide it through the center of helix and the guide is through the center of helix that means here the magnetic focusing field is very very important so the signal related to that amplified the signals to be the signals which signals that is electron beam signals these signals to be amplified to applied to the end of the helix adjustment the the signals to be amplified is applied to the end of the helix adjustment to the electron gun look like that here to the electron gun the amplified signals appears at the output that means the amplified uh, sorry uh, yes uh, it's it that was the amplified signals is appear at the output 
and this output is uh, nothing but the like here now let us see such descriptions of that helix type traveling wave to when the rf signal when the rf signal where is the description here is the descriptions when the rf signal is applied when the rf signal is applied these rf signal is a propagates these signals are propagates around the turns of the helix that means here that means here here and these these propagates rf field having the velocity like the velocity of a light in the axial in this axials the electric field is produced due to rf signals it is advances with the velocity of a light and this is multiplied by the ratio of a helix pitch to the helix circumference okay just revise okay i know this is a very lengthy sentence uh, just i repeat and explain once again we see here that is the rf signals which is applied and it propagates around the turns of the helix that means rf field propagates in that the helix tube and these rf field propagates rf fields having the velocity like the velocity of a light and the axial electric field due to rf signal is advances with a velocity of light with the velocity of light so when the velocity of electron beam traveling through the helix what i say when the velocity of the electron beam traveling through the helix which approximate the rate of advance of the axial field that means the interaction takes place between them that means the interactions are takes place in between them and this is nothing but the nature that on and the average electrons and these electrons deliver the energy to the wave on the helix that means the wave gives the energy from the electrons and these electrons came with the velocity of light that means obviously the waves has the large energy now let us see the signal wave thus the signal wave grows and amplified output is obtained and uh, what about the traveling wave to here look like these sentence it is a very interesting the traveling wave tube may be throw may be dot as the limiting case of the multi cavity claystones that means it's a simple things the traveling wave the traveling wave tube may be thought of as limiting a case of the multi cavity claystones that means here is the not limiting case and it is a very large number of a closely spaced gap in that phase change and that progresses from left to right which is similar to that the velocity as the beam here here i know this is a very uh, tough to understanding because uh, uh, we never see the helix type traveling wave tube physically and we are not uh, performing any kind of the practicals on that so it is a very tough to understanding but uh, as per my view it is a not a tough exactly it is a very easy for understanding let us see another this diagram look at this diagram i just uh, minimize this diagram in that diagram we can see easily uh, there are the two kinds of the waves the first one that is the individual waves and another one is called as the resultant waves and here uh, that is the directions of the electron waves but here we have see 
only interested in that uh, two waves so in that the distribution of electric field strength along the helix axis in that first one diagram in that first one diagram the distribution of electric field distribution of electric field strength along the helix axis produces this is nothing but the signal and this is nothing but the inputs this is nothing but the inputs in that we can see easily one thing the axial electric field is zero the electron e is unaffected by the signals in that diagram we can see easily one thing the axial electric field is zero the electron is unaffected by the signals and in the second one diagrams that means in the b diagram this diagram is simply shows that the velocity of the electron beam is the same as that rf signals and the electron will be located at the zero of the solid wave so these two diagram we can uh, say that this is one kind of the bunch of electrons this is one kind of the bunch of electrons which is induces the second wave look like here look like here look like here these produces the bunch of the second wave and this is nothing but the quarter wave length this is nothing but the quarter wave length look like like that it is here it is called as the quarter wave length so bunching this bunching like that or here we can see this the bunching not here but exactly here that is the bunching so the bunching is continuously takes place until the electrons in in the bunch and it is encountered regarding field and the result deliver the energy to that the waves and the output of this is a very larger than the inputs if the input is low but the output is larger that's why that's why the amplification result is a maximum and the amplitude of that induced wave is increased but one thing we can noted here the amplitude of that induced wave is increased but the phase shift sorry phase shift of the resultant wave it is increased due to the fact of individual wave is larger so here we can see so induced wave is larger the amplitude of the induced wave increased but phase shift of the resultant wave relative to the electron is also increased and why it is increased due to the fact that induced wave is larger so guys it is all about the uh, traveling wave tube it is also called as the hellings wave tube uh we can see here uh, what the syllabus is left in this uh, chapter just give me a moment just give me a moment here we have see the microwave active devices look like here just a moment just a moments here we can traveling wave tube helix tw2 application process we have completed uh now we have see the wave mode and gains in the next lectures so guys uh we have see this is the traveling wave tube and i hope you can easily understand these articles so guys thank you so much